Hey guys, this is Arabia and um, I'm here with Crash. Hello. And we're here at Oyster Fest. How are you doing? So good. So you just finished the performance. It was a lot of fun, right? Yeah, it was cool. We had a good time. Yeah, I did a lot of dancing, a lot of fun yeah. with the band. I enjoyed it. Yeah. So um, my question to you is, you know, you previously were with Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros yeah. and you departed and did, you're doing a solo. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't call it a departing. Okay. Um, you know, still still playing as a Magnetic Zero as well as playing hardly criminal uh, uh -huh. shows. So, um, yeah, it's, it's actually quite a busy summer because we're doing both. Right. Um, you would think <laughs> we would stick to one exclusively, but, yeah, we're going to do both. So. What was the reasoning for um, having a sort of solo? Well, um, I mean, I, I, I had some songs and I wanted to put this record together, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I did. Um, I guess it was, you know, something I would eventually get to. I'm glad it happened now. Right. And now I can do more, you know, albums on my own. Mm -hmm. But Edward Sharp, we're also going to make another record uh, at the end of this year. So whether right. it's collaborative or, or just me writing songs right. for myself, I'm, I'm kind of down for either right, of the right, two. Right, right, right. And your uh, your stuff is a lot of fun. It's very dancing. You know what? Thanks. Where do you? I'm glad you yeah, like it. I was dancing out in the back. It was really interesting. Um, where do you find that inspiration? Your lyrics to to the sound? Uh, well, it's probably because of uh, just growing up in Louisiana in mm -hmm. the South, mm -hmm. and um, as you know, everyone likes to enjoy themselves. <laughs> There's leisurely, you know, things all around. Um, Dancing, of course, is, right. is, is one of them. Um, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I think it, it maybe was just genetically predisposed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when did you know that music was the passion you wanted to pursue? What was that point in time? Um, when I couldn't keep a job, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Very yeah, logical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't keep a job, but I really enjoyed hanging out mm -hmm. and singing and playing. And what was the first instrument you picked up? Um, I guess it'd be guitar, but uh, yeah, I don't really consider myself an instrumentalist, mm -hmm. even though, mm -hmm. of course, I need these things to write. Right. I need these things um, as tools to use, but but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't play very well, I don't think. Mm. Um, so mostly mostly singing. Right. Yeah. You just started off singing, that's how you made yeah, songs? Yeah, just singing really? with friends and hanging out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was it. It was just kind of... Uh, right. A relaxed thing it's always been that really and I guess that's why I guess that's why you know I enjoy having a very relaxed set right, right. You know, it's just something I'm right. used to so one thing that I like to ask artists is like you know a lot of artists are inspired by other artists that sound nothing like them and it always you know I, like some of my favorite folk artists like listening to hip-hop and they get inspired somehow yeah. by that do you have a particular artist like that well I love hip-hop nice I, <laughs> I think Notorious B.I.G. would be my, you know, one of like ultimate favorites mm -hmm. there. Guys like Slick Rick or even Andre 3000, you know. Oh, interesting. More, more uh, current acts. But um, uh, gosh, it'd be, it'd be cool to think of something outside of hip hop and more in another direction. Something I don't sound like. That's tough because I, <laughs> I really try to it's weird. I try to hug right. it all. I try to take everything I love and hug them into these songs. Right. And so, and so in a weird way, some people have even picked up on that. It's, it sounds like a lot at once. Right, exactly. Um, but with sort of my own stamp on it. Um, so that's a difficult question. Maybe I'll have to email your blog to find <laughs> out. I mean, it's hip hop is very different from. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, sure. I mean, I didn't me bust any answer. rhymes up there today. <laughs> you've got, you know, yeah, yeah, you've got yeah. the the feel of Andre 3000 yeah. on stage. Yeah, you so. right. How, no, how about uh, uh, anything like? Um, I really enjoy um, like Big Frida or okay. you know or Katie Red, oh, but I sound nothing like nothing them. Nothing like them. But gotta give it up to the girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good to know. Um, one thing. Um, <laughs> You know, I think that artists, one of the hardest parts of being an artist is the beginning stages. And that's really what Electric Bear is about, is to help those artists out there who are just learning the game and, you know, trying to make something creative. So, what is what was the process for you when you started out? Uh, and any struggles, and how did you get past those challenges? Geez, I, I mean, I guess just by nature of how this path has been for me, 
it seems like the early stages of, of my career actually started when I was a teenager and I just decided I, I liked music so much I'm gonna just sing it all the time and and it was very much a hobby it wasn't anything I was pursuing but right. um, but I guess the thing is when I when I see a friend I hadn't seen in 10 years or so you know all I can really tell them is I've been doing the same thing I've, you right. know I was doing when you last saw me I, so I I guess a bit of my struggle has been about continuing to do what I love right and you know it's it's not like I uh, I don't I don't have kids I don't have a family but I certainly wouldn't be able to raise a family on on my income mm -hmm. uh, however it's never stopped me from from this uh, you know this yeah this journey I've, I've chosen you know mm -hmm. and so I think I don't know I think it's a balance of commitment and and, and practice and all sorts right. of things you know so uh, for me, I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I, I really, you know, went over the moon on a lot of things right. and having a lot of great opportunities with being a part of the Magnetic Zeros and how that's uh, lending itself to... Your career. Yeah, to Hardly Criminal. I mean, there's, there's things like that. So, um, yeah, I think just maybe keeping the faith and doing mm -hmm. what you want to do, you know. Whether that's music or, or beyond even. I mean, right. hell, if you want to be... An amazing, uh, you know, I don't know, lawyer and do great things, fight legal battles that really matter. Then, then I'd say really gun for it right. and uh, yeah, aim for the stars. You know? Now, um, you said that you don't have a family or you know kids. I just mean I don't have kids. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I'm trying to say is, in terms of support, you know, yeah, that I'm obviously was a big part of you becoming who you are right now. Was Edward Sharp, Magnetic Zeros, was that, was that the community you were exposed to early on that got to where you are now? Um, n not so early on because, um, yeah, it's interesting. I moved to Los Angeles after Hurricane Katrina and uh, I met a couple of guys. We formed a band, The Deadly Syndrome, and then we recorded our first record and at, when we were finishing that record that's when Edward Sharp came into the same studio and recorded the first Ed Sharp album so I met everyone then and then I would perform here and there with the zeros but nothing close to full time mm -hmm. Deadly Syndrome and I would do our thing we did like three records um, which is pretty good you know for I mean right. pretty good for you know band just just sort of going about our, our thing and um and then went on to Ed Sharp full time and I think knowing the zeros and at having them as friends right. well before joining the band uh, full time has most certainly been uh, an inspiration and form of encouragement for me as an artist mm -hmm. I just think you know everyone's such incredible musicians right. uh, that you know it it just it, it can't help but inspire you and and so They've also been incredibly supportive of anything I've ever done, even fans of the Deadly Syndrome, right, you know, right. enjoying that. But then when I had this record coming out, they were, uh, Magnetic Zeros and Community, yeah, were, were all about helping me out. Right, right. So I would say it was immediate when I needed it. But right. um, prior to that, yeah, you know, it's just friends being friends. Mm -hmm. and, and much like any uh, circle of friends should be, it was very much, a, I guess, a support group mm -hmm. in, that, in that respect, yeah. So, I mean, you know, when creating community, it's a really collaborative nature behind it. And I feel, you know, I'm, I'm sure Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros has influenced your music in some way, right? Sure, How sure. do you get influenced by them and how have you differentiated yourself from them? Uh, well, it influenced me in a way that, you know, Alex and us, we're all doing things um, uh, without without question or hesitation, you know, if there's something wild and crazy you want to do, and usually like you know, maybe a career move, and your parents are like, "Oh no, I would think about that," I would, you know, and maybe we were going about writing music in the same way. Just, yeah. I want to do this, so I'm gonna do it, and um, and that inspired me, especially after being with the Deadly Syndrome. I, I love the band. I love everything we did, but. Um, to no longer have to share the creative yeah. and this time to be able to do my own thing so running with that freedom and then taking the experience that I've had with Edward Sharp where we just do whatever we want mm -hmm. I mean there's nothing that we would think yeah. uh, is impossible or mm -hmm. and I approached it like such and 
Uh, I think what differentiated me is the fact that I was able to inject some of my other uh, influences that aren't as current as Ed Sharp. And so some of the older New Orleans bands, yeah. you know, like uh, anything from uh, the Neville Brothers and, and, and uh, some good old Dr. John or something like that. And even some country, you know, you got Tony Joe White and soul and blues. And um, so, the, you know, I, I tried to put that stuff uh, and come from that place. Right. Because that's what, you know, that you was You have different history. influences. And yeah, things. sure, a ton. I mean, yeah. Absolutely. How do you know when you completed a song? I feel like that's sometimes the hardest part is like, am I done with this? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, we could argue forever, <laughs> too, but I don't want, you know, you, you, the song can't go on forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fight has got to end. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. Um, so one last piece of advice that, you know, there are a lot of, our audience is a lot of creative people, a lot of artists that want to be up and coming. What is one piece of advice you'd like to give them in terms of their journey artistically and creatively? Um, yeah, we kind of covered on that before, and I, I guess I would just say committing and committing. And, and, and polishing up what you do and getting really good at it and uh, sharing the experience with other, other artists, you know, try, like, collaborating. It was weird, when I grew up, I was afraid of the word jam because all the jam sessions I had sat in and, and with uh, any friend, or, mm. it was just a mess. I mean, none of right. us were real players, I'll admit. Um, um, for as many, you know, studied artists uh, uh, as there are in New Orleans, there are equal amount of, you know, right. uh, uh, unschooled, naive artists. And, and I, I come from that side of things. Um, <laughs> and so... You know, I wouldn't say jam, but I would say collaborate and, and mix it up and challenge yourself, you know. Do things you uh, wouldn't do. And if you have trouble, what is it? There's that, uh, that, uh, that, that deck of cards that they made, Oblique Strategies. If you really are stumped, try that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good words of advice. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Crash, for joining Thanks us. Thanks so much for hanging out. Thank yeah, you. It was a lot of fun. Thanks, y'all. Thanks. <laughs> cool.